In this video, we will talk about the clinical assessment of the main signs of Parkinson's disease. We observe if the patient is aligned correctly when sitting on the chair or if she slides on the seat. We also observe spontaneous movements, blinking if she oscillates her trunk from side to side, if she keeps her legs crossed or if she holds one of her hands with the other. The main sign in Parkinson's disease is bradykinesia. To assess bradykinesia, we evaluate both limbs separately, preferably starting with the least affected side. In the case of the patient in the video, it corresponds to the left side. First, we will ask for a movement of the limb at a comfortable speed and spontaneous amplitude, and then request the same movement at fast speed and with a wide range. In this case, we are assessing the rotational movement of the hand with pronosupination. As can be seen in the video, the movement with the right hand is slower and less wide compared to the left hand. In the upper limb, we can also request the performance of the finger grip or opening and closing of the hand, pronosupination of the hand with arms in front or with the elbow flexed. We will assess the presence of bradykinesia also in the lower limbs. For this, we will ask the patient to perform a repeated plantar flexion. We can also assess hip flexion while sitting. Muscle rigidity is another characteristic sign in Parkinson's disease, and it is defined as a resistance to non-spin dependent movement. We first feel muscle tone and then explore passive mobility. We can make circular movements or simply passively perform wrist flexion extension. If we do not notice any resistance after a few seconds of passive movement, we can activate the resistance by asking the patient to voluntarily move the hand that we are not assessing. We repeat the movement now with the most affected hand. We can see that when requesting the voluntary contralateral movement to the side that we are assessing, the resistance is activated when we try to mobilize the limb. We also assess muscle rigidity in lower limbs. We can passively move the foot in the sagittal plane or we can do a circumduction movement. When we ask the patient for a voluntary contralateral movement, we can see how the resistance to passive mobilization of the foot increases. Again, we repeat the same on the most affected side by the disease. Tremor is the most known sign of Parkinson's disease, but it is not essential for diagnosis. Tremor is usually between 4 and 6 hertz and usually stops with voluntary movement. Now we can see the patient keeping her hands on her legs and her bare feet on the floor. In this case, we can only observe a tremor in the right hand. The fourth diagnostic sign is postural instability, which we will assess through different balance tests. The first test we perform is changing position from sitting to standing, starting from a chair with the arms crossed over the torso. We consider that the patient has an alteration of balance when she cannot get up in the way we have indicated. We can also do the Romberg test. In this test, the patient maintains standing position with arms at the sides of the body, looking forward and feet together. A separation of the tip of the feet forming an angle of 45 degrees is allowed. This test can be performed with eyes open and closed. We consider alteration of balance when the patient is not able to maintain the position or if the patient falls. Another possible test to perform is the post-destabilization test. The best way to perform this test is for the evaluator to stand behind the patient as a safety measure. We will apply a destabilization pull in a posterior direction on the patient's shoulders. The test is negative if the patient only has to take one or two steps to regain balance. It is positive if instead she has to do several short steps backwards without the possibility of controlling her body for not falling. 
Once we have assessed all of these signs, we can determine the severity of the disease through the Hoin and Jar scale. Thank you for using this educational e-platform.